الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله ثم أما بعد We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one and only worthy of worship, and we pray that He forgives us all of our sins, and that He guides us to the straight path, and ease our life, and make it possible that we become amongst those who He love, for we all share in our hearts the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another session, my brothers and sisters, of eternal message, the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the message of life, the message of time. Today, inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we have been accustomed to, we will talk about another issue that touches our creed and touches our hearts and possibly be the reason for us to be successful in this life and in the hereafter. And we will also learn to try to avoid the mistakes that many of our brothers and sisters fall into without knowing or knowing at times. May Allah protect us from ourselves and protect us from everyone else. I'd like to welcome you, the viewer, the beautiful name that you carry, and the heart that is open to learning. For if you open your heart for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will guide you. فَمَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَهْدِيَهُ يَشْرَحْ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ Whoever wishes or wills or wants Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide them, then let them open their hearts for Islam. Meaning let them open their hearts and surrender it to the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You surrender your heart, put it in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and put the efforts and He will guide. And with us also, the brothers that I've loved throughout the time that we've shared on the stage, in front of the camera, in front of you. Brother Brahim from Kanakiri, Gini Kanakiri, and Brother Akmal from Malaysia, and Noor from Indonesia, and I'm sure... You've known Brother Abdul Fattah from the States, from America. And yourself, as well as myself here, will enjoy our setting and hope that we learn. Our session today, brothers and sisters, is about sacrifice. It's about the slaughtering for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's what we call in Arabic, al-dhabh. Al-dhabh. To sacrifice of whatever you're slaughtering of an animal, whether it is cattle, birds, or whatever you're slaughtering that is halal and permissible for it to be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a very important topic today because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it a sign of faith a sign of faith for those who are cautious and concerned and for those who fulfill and practice the sacrifice for his sake. He said in, Allah, in, in the Quran, in Surah Al-Hajj, وَالْبُدْنَ جَعَلْنَاهَا لَكُمْ مِنْ شَعَائِرِ اللَّهِ Al-Budn here means the cattles. Cows, camels, sheep. What the Hajj slaughters during his journey of pilgrimage. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we have made it among the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The cattle itself, or the actual slaughtering of the cattle, is a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala itself. وَمَنْ يُعَظِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ Whoever greatly, graciously, majestically appreciates the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it is evidence of his taqwa, his pious. Mm-hmm. So notice this. He made the slaughtering a sign of him, himself. And it's the, sta- it's the status of worship. Mm-hmm. Slaughtering itself, it's an act of worship. And since it's an act of worship, Abdul Fattah, who should we give it to? Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who should we direct it to, Akmal? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who should we practice it and live it up to? Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it's an ibadah a stage Part or a form of worship and we know without doubt all forms of worship 
are only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, directing him that this is only for him. He said, فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنْحَرْ فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنْحَرْ A pray to your Lord. Wanhar here, a slaughter. Slaughter for your Lord only. Your mm. sacrifice is only for the Lord. And annahr wa dhabh, they're almost the same. Annahr is to stab, wa dhabh is to cut, to slaughter. Okay. And that's based on the animal that you're dealing with. So if you're dealing with a sheep, a goat, or a cow, chicken, rooster, pigeons, then you're slaughtering. Yeah. Deers, etc. If you're dealing with a camel, mm -hmm. then the camel is to be stabbed right here. Okay. Oh. That's called nahr. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with it because that's what the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam carried with him when he went for his hajj. All of what he carried were camels okay. mm. to sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. And since he's going to sacrifice camels, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in ha. Oh, okay. Stab it here. And he did. Okay. Do you know how many he, 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 he uh, sacrificed? How many? Yeah. 63. One for every year of his life. <laughs> By his own hands. Uh -huh. He sacrificed more. But the ones that he actually sacrificed with his own hands were 63 because that's how long the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lived. Mm -hmm. You had a question? Yes. Uh, you have explained about the difference between uh, a nahar and a dhabah. So I want to ask you what is the difference between uh, a dhabah and kurban? Ah. Kurban is actually that same animal. That you are doing it for this, that you're slaughtering it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why it's called Qurban. Qurban. Ah. It's called Hadi. Udhiyah. Mm -hmm. Okay? All of these are forms of, of slaughterings based on the times of it. But some people might use the word Qurban because it is a, a, an act that will bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. And it's a stage of ibadah, a form of ibadah. Qul inna salati. وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِكَ لَهَ وَبِذَلِكَ أُمِرْتُ وَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Say my prayers and my sacrifice. Nusuki here means sacrifice. Okay. Say my prayers and my sacrifice. Notice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala combines between prayers and sacrifice. وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي In my life and death. It's for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. You live for Allah and you die for Allah, you sacrifice for Allah, you pray for Allah, you, you call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you fast for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you go to hajj for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you give charity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're honest for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything that you do, brothers and sisters, should be directed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your whole life is a stage of ibadah. Ibn Taymiyyah defines the ibadah by saying, it's ismun jami'un li kulli ma yuhibbuhu Allah ta'ala wa yardah. It's a noun, a name. The ibadah, it's a noun, a name for everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves hmm. and accepts. Yeah. Whether it is known or hidden. Mm -hmm. Adhering or not. It's all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can have all your life as a ibadah. form of ibadah. Yes. Right. And especially sacrifice. Okay. And it is very important, brothers and sisters, because when we eat, we have to make sure as Muslims that our food is considered halal. And when we talk about halal, we're talking about the meat that we eat. Yeah. And for it to be halal, it has to be slaughtered in an Islamic way. Right. And the way, the Islamic way, is to make sure that it is, the arteries are cut, and the animal is left to bleed till death. And that the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned at the time of the process of the slaughtering. 
and that it is done by a Muslim or the people of the book, okay. mm. whether it's a Christian or a Jew. The scholars have said that if it's done by a Christian or a Jew, then the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be mentioned when you eat that meat. Because mm. not necessarily they will say Bismillah at the time of the slaughtering. Mm. But if it's a Muslim, then it has to be done. That the Muslim has to say Bismillah. And if he wants to add Wallahu Akbar, and then that is fine. Mm -hmm. He does not have to face it towards the Qibla, <laughs> like some might say. Wow. But at least he has to say Bismillah. And he has, needs to make sure that he does cut. Yes, it well. Yeah. You know, cut it well, the neck. Mm -hmm. Can he chop the whole neck off? Yes, no. he can. There's no problem with that. This is a very delicate issue, and a little mistake might cause you and I to go to hell because of the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. You understand what this is? Mm. That's why it says, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after the break, you and I will share a hadith that we will talk over for a little while and, and, and comment on it. And I'm sure the brothers here will have a little comments over that. I would love you to share a comment, not a question with me, okay. in this aspect no of the importance of sacrificing for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for our lives are all for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After the break, we will continue with our session. Thank you. Those who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for those who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, for those who want to enter the Jannah, the paradise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for the believers, and that's why we need to learn and we need to get to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us so that we submit ourselves to the orders of Allah. And this is knowledge that we need to learn. That's why we're spending more time to look into the verses and to the meanings of the verses in depth so that we can get to learn from it what we need ourselves to be steadfast to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to ponder over the meanings of the miraculous words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Welcome back to our show, and hopefully you enjoyed the first half, and I pray that the second half will be as joyful and interesting as the first. I promised you that I will share with you a hadith, and it's basically a story that brings to our attention the danger of falling into a ditch of shirk within the process of sacrifice. I need all four of you to pay attention to me with this hadith. The Rasul Sallallahu says in this hadith, and it's a little long hadith, but I'm going to read it because I want you to pay attention to it. The Rasul Sallallahu says, دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ رَجُلٌ فِي ذُبَابِ وَدَخَلَ النَّارِ رَجُلٌ فِي ذُبَابِ قَالُوا كَيْف؟ الصحابة قالوا كيف؟ كيف ذلك يا رسول الله قال مر رجلان على قوم لهم صنم لا يجاوزه أحد حتى يقرب له شيئا فقالوا لأحدهما قرب قال ليس عندي شيء أقرب قالوا قرب ولو ذبابا فخل فقرب ذبابا فخلوا سبيله فدخل النار وقالوا للآخر قرب قال ما كنت لأقرب لأحد شيئا دون الله عز وجل فضربوه فقتلوه فدخل الجنة الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم says in the hadith a man entered hell 
because of a fly. And another entered heaven because of a fly. Fly. F-L-Y. The annoyingest insect. <laughs> it keeps on coming to your nose and you try to you know, wave him away. Was a cause for one to go to hell and another to go to heaven. So the Sahaba were like amazed and they said, How is that, Ya Rasulullah? He said, There was a village which they had an idol, a statue, that they used to worship. And no one passes by that village unless he sacrifices for that statue an idol. <laughs> so they said to the first one, Sacrifice. Bring something forward to our Lord, our God, <laughs> our statue, our idol. He said, I don't have anything. They said, bring forward and sacrifice even if it's just a fly. So he did it. <laughs> he didn't see, see it to be a big deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he did. They let him go, but he entered hell because of a fly. In the other, they told him, bring forward a sacrifice for our God, for our statue and idol. He said, I was not to bring forward a sacrifice for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if it's a fly. Because they said, even if it's a fly, just bring something forward. He said, I was not to bring forward a sacrifice for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if it's a fly. They beat him and killed him. But he entered heaven. Yeah. It's a matter of Islam and not. Tawheed or shirk. The true aqidah or the false. Hmm. Don't ever underestimate the sin. Especially when the sin is about tawheed. It's falling into shirk. Because it might throw you in hellfire and you did not anticipate. Mm -hmm. Yes, Noor? Yeah. Uh, some people they uh, do sacrifice and uh, for something for idol, and they told it, and they they say that this idol will make him close to to the God to uh, Allah. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think about it? That's the exact shirk, mm -hmm. the exact sin that the people of Quraysh do. used to do. Yes. Yeah. Their intention was not to worship those 360 idols in the Kaaba. They saw them just as statues to intercede on behalf of them so they can go to heaven. Right. In the Quran it says, Man abuduhum illa 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 Allah Allah We only worship them so they can elevate us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, there's a hadith where the Rasul explains how shirk actually started. Hmm. At the beginning of time. He yes. said, the people of Nuh, Noah, they used to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were all Muslim. 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 But after his death, there was also a core of group mm -hmm. of righteous men. They were the examples of the people in worshiping. They also passed away. In time, with time, people forgot. And all of a sudden, they're not worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as they used to. Those shaitan... The Satan came to them and said, why don't you build statues, sculptures of those righteous men? So when you see these sculptures and statues, they can remind you. They can remind you of how they used to worship so you can worship like them. Mm -hmm. Sounded good, didn't it? It reminds <laughs> me of something, though. Uh -huh. of what we see sometimes on, see, on TV, you know. Uh, especially even, you know, surprisingly, even in the Vatican itself. Where they have, you know, their arch uh, bishops and so on, you know, statues everywhere. Yeah, they have statues. You know? yeah. So it looks from the outside, from the surface, that it's okay. Mm -hmm. But then generations came after. Yeah. They also forgot. And then the shaitan came to the latter generations yeah. and said, Do you know why your forefathers built these statues? Why these sculptures actually existed? Because they used to worship them to bring them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they committed the shirk. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says? He said, Ula'ika shirarul khalqi indallah. Mm -hmm. 
Ulaika, they are the worst of creations in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who? The latter? Generation. Or the gener the, those who built the statues? The old generation. The yeah. original generation, those yeah, who built the statues and the sculptures yeah. are the worst yeah. in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they are the reason why the latter generations committed that yeah. major sin. Mm -hmm. sure. You understand? That's why in Islam, brothers and sisters, we don't have statues. We don't have them in our homes or we should not mm -hmm. we should not hang photos sculptures of any living being or living thing that has a soul and adhab is a form of ibadah as you can see in this hadith that I shared with you even if it's just a fly just fly yeah. it can cause you to go to hell the fatah yeah what do you think about that? It's scary, isn't it? Yeah, Islam yes. is very comprehensive to the very minute, to the, you know, yes. to the big. Yeah. One of the beautiful sayings, brothers and sisters, that you will ever hear is, do not look at the sin that you commit, but look at who you're committing the sin towards. No. One might say it's just... Just a fly. Fly. Just yeah. fly. Yeah. But it's shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And by you committing this towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you might just lose your, your everlasting life in heaven. Ibrahim. Yes. <laughs> As a Muslim, we always need to be alert and aware. Of course. What are the advices that you might share with us and with the viewers out there? Or what are the tools that you might use for yourself to keep you up awake? <laughs> Um, and knowing what you're doing. Yeah, um, I can say this kind of things we we must take take it into consideration and not to minimize it because not uh, the the sin doesn't matter. But to whom we are doing, which uh, which is God, the Almighty, we must take God's law into consideration and uh, and prevent ourselves from His uh, His He's uh, angry. Angerness, yeah. Yes, anger. Yeah. Akmal, mm -hmm. can you give the viewer mm -hmm. a tool or two mm -hmm. that they can carry with themselves and remind themselves with that would allow them to understand mm -hmm. what they should do or not do in life? Okay. I think that, um, you know, everybody, nobody perfect, actually. Nobody's perfect. So I think. Um, we can remind ourselves before we sleep of what we have we done uh, in the whole day, and then uh, we should know. Actually, um, we are uh, the Allah is okay. Allah is always always uh, looks to uh, to us, and uh, we 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 have to realize that okay. even though nobody sees us. Yeah. Okay, remember that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is seeing at all times, mm -hmm. seeing you yeah. at all times. Brothers and sisters out there, I advise myself and everyone else, get yourself to recognize the sins. Recognize yeah. the sins. Learn what they are. Mm -hmm. Don't just educate yourself with the good deeds. Yeah. Because without knowing what's wrong, mm -hmm. you just might fall into it. And there's an ayah in the Quran al-Kareem which it says, وَلِتَسْتَبِينَ سَبِيلُ الْمُجْرِمِينَ And for the path of the criminals to be known. And Umar ibn al-Khattab has one of the most beautiful sayings. When he was asked, would you prefer to be someone that has never committed a sin or someone that committed a sin and repented? Mm -hmm. He said, I would prefer to be the latter one. And those who do not know the stage of jahiliyyah will not know the stage of Islam. Educate yourself with the mistakes of people, with the mistakes of life. So you can avoid them. Stay away from them. Protect yourself from them. And through that also, it will be very simple for you to know what you're supposed to be doing and how your life should be conducted. We studied today the sacrifice. There's an aspect of the sacrifice called a nether. A nether. To vow a promise of sacrifice of form for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our next session, inshallah. We will talk about another, and I chose it to be independent 
because of the importance of it and for the details and excessive need that we need to understand. Okay. I look forward to seeing you again and for you to see us again in our upcoming session, inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you wish to read, we'll talk about another. Prepare yourself, have your pencil and pen and notebook handy, and we will have ours. May your day be great, and may your life be blessed. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.